I want to ask you a question. Do you have any Haskell programs installed on your computer? And the reason I'm asking this question is because I hear from a lot of folks in the Linux community especially that they don't have any Haskell installed on their computer. I don't want to install any Haskell programs on my machine because then I'd have to bloat my system because I'd have to install the Haskell compiler and various Haskell libraries. And since I don't already have Haskell in the, on the machine, I never want it there. So I'm just never going to install any Haskell programs. And I think that's crazy because some of the best pieces of software, bar none, are written in Haskell. And today I'm going to share with you what I think are some of the best examples of programs written in Haskell. Some of these programs I think are so incredible that every single person watching this video probably should have them installed on their machine. And of course, let's go ahead and get this one out of the way because I think everybody watching this video knows that I was eventually going to talk about Xmonad. Xmonad, of course, is a tiling window manager. It's the tiling window manager that I'm actually using today. And you know, Xmonad is just fantastic. It is just such a comfy little tiling window manager. It's it's fast. It's, it's fully featured. Anything you want to be able to do within a tiling window manager, you can do inside Xmonad, right? It's got various layouts that I could swap between and it it's just fantastic. Xmonad, I've done a ton of videos on Xmonad in the past. Now I get it. Not everybody likes tiling window managers, but a lot of you guys that watch my content, I know use tiling window managers. And if you're a tiling window manager user, but you've never actually tried Xmonad, you owe it to yourself to try out this window manager because virtually anything that you can imagine you can get done with Xmonad. Uh, it's just fantastic because it's so extensible because of all the Haskell libraries that have been built supporting this window manager. The next Haskell program I want to talk about is another one. I've done a video on this one as well, and that is Aura. Aura is a package manager. It's actually an AUR helper, so it's for Arch Linux users. So obviously not everybody uses Arch, but if you do, Aura is pretty cool because, you know, it's just a, well, let me clear the screen here. Clear that, that artwork. So let's run a Aura command. For example, this one was in my history, Aura dash capital A. So this is an AUR sync. So install from the AUR Unvanquished, which is actually a free and open source game. It's first person shooter, kind of like a monster first person shooter. Really cool. If I do a TLDR Aura, you can see some of the things you can do with Aura. Basically, it's like any other standard Arch Linux package manager slash AUR helper. Now let's move on to some of the programs that I think every Linux user should have installed and use. Well, not just Linux users, all computer users. Let's talk about shell check. What is shell check? Well, as the name implies, it checks your shell scripts. It checks the syntax in a shell script. So let me CD into a, a repo that has some shell scripts. Uh, I've got some, some shell scripts here. So let's do a shell check on a particular script and I'll get a warning. It says, you know, I should have written this particular command differently. It doesn't like the asterisk there. It's complaining about the uh, use of a, a glob there. So that was nice that I chose that particular <laughs> uh, script to run shell check on because shell check, if there were no uh, syntax errors at all, it actually wouldn't return any output to the shell. So if you do any kind of shell scripting, and I don't mean you have to be a programmer, if you do anything with shell scripting, if you ever edit shell scripts, if you ever do a, an occasional commit to somebody's GitHub or GitLab that's mostly shell scripting, right? You need to have shell check installed on your computer. That way you can always run those changes. You know, if you edit a, a shell script, you can run that through shell check to make sure that you actually wrote that with the correct format, the correct syntax before you make that commit. And shell check is integrated into so many programming tools and IDEs. I know shell check is integrated in things like VS code. I'm sure there's probably Emacs plugins for shell check and things like that. So shell check, install it. You're going to love it. And then finally, I want to talk about what is probably the most popular Haskell program on the planet, and that is Pandoc, the Universal Document Converter. And as the name implies, it converts document formats from 
all of these document formats. For example, uh, Markdown and LaTeX and ASCII and org mode, right? You can uh, do DOCX and RTF, ODT, you know, the open document format that things like LibreOffice uh, use. It has support for things like a media wiki and Vim wiki and Zim wiki and yada, 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 Beamer and so many other formats and PDF, HTML, right? So I can convert my org document, for example, to HTML, to, to a web page, you know, and that's kind of how I do things with my websites. I typically uh, write everything in org mode and then just eventually convert the org documents over to just static HTML. And, you know, again, that's Pandoc. It's pretty simple to use. If I do a TLDR on Pandoc, you zoom in, you can see it's, it's pretty simple to use. Pandoc and then, for example, input.md. So it's the first file is the input file, some markdown file, and then dash O for output, and then name it you know whatever name you want to name it and then give it whatever extension you want to name it and it'll know to convert that for example in this case to output.pdf so we're converting markdown to pdf and you can see in the next example pandoc input.docx so it's a docx format and then dash dash to gfm dash o output.md so what it's doing here it's converting docx to markdown but this extra flag it, there's several different variants, formats of Markdown, and it's converting it to GFM, which is the GitHub flavored Markdown. Obviously, practically every computer user on the planet has a need to occasionally convert doc formats and so many of your graphical applications that convert doc formats between each other. You know what they're using? underneath the hood they're using pandoc right so all of you people that say you don't have any haskell on your system uh, if you're running a linux machine especially do do a where is pandoc and actually make sure pandoc is not installed on your system i think a lot of you guys are going to be surprised and then i just want to briefly talk about three more niche tools specialty tools not everybody will have a need for but they're written in haskell and i think they're fantastic uh applications so i do want to just briefly mention them xdg ninja so what this is it's a command line program that you run and it'll actually search your system for all the config files all your dot files that are not necessarily in uh, the dot config folder so you know some applications will let you put config files in multiple directories like the home directory, for example, and a lot of people complain, I've got too much stuff going on in my home directory. Well, XDG Ninja will actually give you a list of all the config files that are, for example, in your home directory and where you could potentially move them to if that's an option. Now, not everything can be moved, but most of them can. So XDG Ninja will help you clean up that messy home directory. Git Annex is another one. This is a, a Git related tool that I did a brief video on, uh, just barely scratching the surface. This, this is a very powerful program, so it allows managing large files using Git, because by default, Git does not handle large data files well, so Git Annex will allow you to do that. And then one other one I've never actually used, but I did think it was fit just for historical reasons. It's kind of a neat project and that is Darks. So Darks is a free and open source cross-platform version control system. So this is an alternative to using something like Git, which a lot of people, uh, especially just casual computer users, they know about Git because of GitHub and GitLab, right? They know about version control, but they don't know that there's other things, that other, there are other version control systems out there other than Git. Some of the ones that were very popular in the past include Mercurial and SVN, and you had, you know, Bazaar, and you know, all of this stuff that, that are Git alternatives. Git eventually became the de facto version control system, mainly because of the rise in popularity of GitHub. But, you know, you do have alternatives out there, and one of those alternatives includes Darks. So that was just about six or seven programs that I think are really neat that are written in Haskell. I've used all of them except for Darks. And for four of them, I can't imagine not actually having them installed on every computer of mine. Of course, that's me personally, but with Shellcheck and Pandoc especially, I think everyone watching this video definitely should check those out. And, uh, you know, don't 
Don't be prejudiced against Haskell, right? Don't be so anti-Haskell or anti-bloat that you miss out on some of these really fantastic pieces of software. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Maxim, my homies, Too Bald, Matt, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Royal West, Armor Dragon, Bash Potato, Chuck, Commander Angry, George, Lee, Marstrom, Methos, Nate, Er, Jan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Rolling Tools, Devler, Willie, and Zenabit. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This look at some of the popular programs that are written in Haskell, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, want to see more videos about free and open source software, including free and open source software written in Haskell, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. Also check out Movie Monad, a video player written in Haskell.